Ender's Game, Chapter 7, Salamander. Isn't it nice to know that Ender can do the impossible? The player's deaths have always been sickening. I've always thought the giant's drink was the most perverted part of the whole mind game. But going for the eye like that? This is the one we want to put in command of our fleet? What matters is that he won the game that couldn't be won. I suppose you'll move him now. We were waiting to see how he handled the thing with Bernard. He handled it perfectly. So as soon as he can cope with the situation, you move him to one he can't cope with? Doesn't he get any rest? He'll have a month or two, maybe three with his launch group. That's really quite a long time in a child's life. Does it ever seem to you that these boys aren't children? I look at what they do, the way they talk, and they don't seem like little kids. They're the most brilliant children in the world, each in his own way. But shouldn't they still act like children? They aren't normal. They act like history. Napoleon and Wellington, Caesar and Brutus. You're, we're trying to save the world, not heal the wounded heart. You're too compassionate. General Levy has no pity for anyone. All the videos say so. But don't hurt this boy. Are you joking? I mean, don't hurt him more than you have to. L.A. sat across from Ender at dinner. I finally figured out how you sent that message, using Bernard's name. Me? Asked Ender. Come on, who else? It sure wasn't Bernard, and Shen isn't too hot on the computer, and I know it wasn't me. Who else? Doesn't matter. I figured out how to fake a new student entry. You just created a student named Bernard blank. Bernard space. So the computer didn't kick out as a repeat of another student. Sounds like that might work. Okay, okay, it does work, but you did have a ticket on the first day. Or he did it to keep it in too much something else. I can't do it with your name. Oh, anything with the editor gets kicked out. I can't get it inside your files at all. Either. You made your own security system. Ignorant. I just then trashed some of my files. He's running me off the system. I need protection under system. If I give you my system, you'll know how I get into trash me. You see me? I ask. The sweetest friend you have. And your last I'll for you. Now? Can I finish eating? You never finish eating. It was true. And Trey always had food after a meal. And it was through. Let go then. When I got to the nurse, it was by, down by the bed. It didn't bring over here. Oh. But when I was just in bed, and it was just sitting there. He locked so closed. What up? Asked Lele. In answer, Ender palmed his locker. Unauthorized access attempt, it said. It didn't open. Somebody done a dance on your head. Somebody eat your face. You want my security system now? And Ender got up and walked away from his bed. And Ender turned a lay with a little piece of paper. A little you no, know, this is on your bed. You must sat on it. And from Ender get a salamander army, Commander Bondo Madrid, affected immediately. Green, green, brown. No possession tra transferred. You're smart, Ender, but you don't do battle with me, but me. And Ender shook his head. Is this anything to promote him now? No, nobody got promoted before they were eight years old. Ender wasn't in seven yet, and launches 
usually moved into the arm together, with most of these getting in the UK at the same time. There were no transfers on any of the other beds. The ones were finally cut together. Just when Bruno was getting with everybody, even Ender, just when Ender was a girlfriend out of a lay, just when his life was finally getting livable, Ender reached down and pulled up from the bed. Some matter is in contention anyway, Ole said. Ender was so angry at the unfairness of the transfer that tears were coming into his eyes. Mustn't cry, he told himself. Ole saw the day, but it had the great night. They're far heads, Ender. They won't even let you take anything you own. Ender grinned and did didn't cry after all. Think I should step naked? I laughed too. Impulse and Ender hugged him tight, almost for Valentine. He even thought of Valentine then and wanted to go home. I don't want to go, he said. Play back. I understand that Ender. You the best. Maybe it's everything. They wanted everything, said. So I wanted to learn what it was like to have a friend. I wanted so my friend. Always to my friend. He thinked. He threw a blade and under on the eagle's ear. Blood face, he turned away and walked to his own at the back of the barracks. And yet the kiss and word was somehow forbidden. A sort of religion, perhaps. Or maybe word of some private and powerful meaning for a lay alone. Whatever it meant, a lay, and you know that it was sacred. They get uncovered for Ender, as one Ender's mother when he was young for the monitor in the neck. And she had put her hands on his head when he, he thought he was asleep and prayed over him. Ender had never spoken to anyone, not even to mother, had left as a memory of holiness. It was mother of him when she thought that no one, and not even he, could see her. That was what a given him, gift so sacred that Ender could not bow to men. Such an thing could be said. Lay reached his bed and turned his under eyes for only a lot of understanding. And there were no being visible. He'd have to pick up colors in one of the public areas. The others would finish very soon. He didn't want to go near the best hall. The game would be near the ground. None of the games appealed to him, though he felt now. So he went back to the back of the room and signed on to pride him. Quickly, I am now. Carefully down to the giant in the middle of the room. For a while, and rat gnawing at the spot. But there are no pins in the night. They have to look at. The giant's corpse lays to the sea cat. The torn by the scab was torn. Maggie had done their, their work on the organ. Now it was the, the, the desiccated mummy. Hollow out in a rig, rigid grin. His empty fingers curled. Ender remembered burrowing out when it had been alive and malicious. Intelligent and frustrated as he was, and to do such men. But the, the giant had become part of the landscape now, so there would be no age him. Ender had always gone on over the edge of the castle of the Queen of Hearts, where there were game enough for him. But none of those healed to know. He would jump and load a and emerge in the forest. It was a ground he was he grounds with a dozen children laughing his leg. Ender came and found that the game he had become killed. Though usually his gears gave well, in fact, he was more than the other children. But I slapped the ignored him. He crept to the top, boy whirled down the long spot round, then to sleep. He had normal right to this land under the ladder. The side would not hold him. Another key bars. He could climb away to the random, a bar seemed to be in Sancho's hell. He could sit on the seesaw until he rose to the apex, then he fell. When the merry-go-round went past, he could not hold on to any of the and Sancho for Gore spurled him off. The other children laughed with rockets, offensive. They circled around him and pointed and laughed for many seconds before they went back to their play. And wanted to hit them. Throw them in the brook. Instead, he walked into the forest. He found a path to the road. He had still invisible games off to his eyes. Ender followed none of them. He wanted to see the path led. It clearly made a sign that said, Drink, Traveler. And went forward 
and looked at the well on the, the wood of the slattering wolves with human faces and eyes of the children from the playground, only now their teeth could tear and weapon with quick dirt. His next figure appeared as usual in the same spot and was eaten again, though Ender tried to climb down into the well. The next appearance, though, was at the playground. Again, the children laughed at him. Laugh all you want, Ender thought. I know what you are. He pushed one of them. She followed him, angry. Ender led her up the side. Of course he fell through, but this time, following so closely behind him, she also fell through. When she hit the ground, she turned into a wolf and lay there, dead or stunned. One by one, Ender led each of the others into a trap. But before he had finished off the last of them, the wolves began reviving and were no longer children. Ender was torn apart again. This time, shaking and sweating, Ender found his figure revived on the giant's table. I should quit, he told himself. I should go to my new army. But instead, he made his figure drop down from the table and walk around the giant's body to the playground. This time, as soon as the child hit the ground and turned into a wolf, Ender dragged the body to the brook and pulled it in. Each time, the body sizzled as though the water were acid. The wolf was consumed, and a dark cloud of smoke arose and drifted away. The children were easily dispatched, though they be began following him in twos and threes at the end. Ender found no wolves waiting for him in the clearing, and he lowered himself into the well on the bucket rope. The light in the cavern was dim, but he could see piles of jewels. He passed them by, noting that behind him eyes glinted among the gems. A table covered with food did not interest him. He passed through a group of cages, hanging from the ceiling of the cave, each containing some exotic, friendly-looking creature. I'll play with you later, Ender thought. At last he came to a door, with these words in glowing emeralds. The end of the world. He did not hesitate. He opened the door and stepped through. He stood on a small ledge high on a cliff overlooking a terrain of bright and deep green forest with dashes of autumn color and patches here and there of cleared land with ox-drawn plows and small villages a castle on a rise in the distance and clouds riding currents of air below him above him the sky was the ceiling of a vast cavern with crystals dangling in bright stalactites the door closed behind him ender studied the scene intently with the beauty of it he cared less for survival than usual. He cared little at the moment what the game of this place might be. He had found it, and seeing it was its own reward. And so, with no thought of consequences, he jumped from the ledge. Now he plummeted downward toward a roiling river and savage rocks, but a cloud came between him and the ground as he fell and caught him and carried him away. It took him to the tower of the castle and through the open window, bearing him in. There it left him in a room with no apparent door in floor or ceiling and windows looking out over a certainly fatal fall. A moment ago, he had thrown himself from a ledge carelessly. This time he hesitated. The small rug before the fire unraveled itself into a long slender serpent with wicked teeth. I am your only escape, it said. Death is your only escape. Ender looked around the room for a weapon, when suddenly the screen went dark. Words flashed around the rim of the desk. Report to Commander immediately. You are late. Green, green, brown. Furious, Ender snapped off the desk and went to the color wall, where he found the ribbon of green, green, brown, touched it and followed it as it lit up before him. The dark green, light green, and brown of the ribbon reminded him of the early autumn kingdom he had found in the game. I must go back there, he told himself. The serpent is a long thread. I can let myself down from the tower and find my way through that place. Perhaps it's called the end of the world because it's the end of the games, because I can go to one of the villages and become one of the little boys working and, and playing there with nothing to kill and nothing to kill me, just living there. As he thought of it, though, he could not imagine what just living might actually be. He had never done it in his life, but he wanted to do it anyway.